Isaiah chapter 43, starting in verse 15. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's Creator, your King. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I don't know about you, but sometimes in this day and time, it kind of feels like we're living in the midst of a wasteland to some degree. If you watch enough TV, that's why I haven't watched a newscast in about two years now. But if you, uh, if you pay attention to that kind of stuff, that's what it seems like we are. Well, God, as he said through Isaiah back then, I think he's saying now, I'm doing a new thing. And I also think he's saying, won't you come with me? Won't you come with me? So he is doing a new thing. So God bless you. We're so glad that you're here today. If you would please stand to your feet as we begin to worship. We'd like to welcome you today. Welcome all those that are watching online. And it is our desire, if there's anyone in the house today who has never accepted Jesus as Savior, maybe that's the new thing for you today to accept Christ as your Savior. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for what you've done. And Lord, we praise you that you are constantly doing new things. And we just pray, Lord, that you would, um, that you would open our, the eyes of our heart, the eyes, God, open our vision to see the things that you're doing. And when you call us to it, God, may we step through forcefully and do exactly what you're calling us to do. Lord, we love you so much. And we just pray that our lives would be about the gospel, that each and every conversation that we have, God, would be gospel-centered, that we could tell others about your glory, about your grace, about your mercy. And as we say goodbye to the year 2023, Lord, let us look with hope to the future. For I do believe that you are doing incredible things in our lives and that you want to do more. Father, may we follow you. Lord, we love you. We pray that everything that happens in this place today, God, will glorify you when we lift your name in this place. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, let's worship him. I was buried beneath my shame.
sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing, now your love is the end that I'm breathing. I have a future, my that you have been called out of that grave and to his glorious day and I love you Lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hand from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so. It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me yes. Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me
us sing that. All my life we have been faithful. Worship him in this moment. It's all my life. Again, church, just your voice. Bow 
before the lion and the lamb. Amen, amen. So before we start this next song, um, I didn't tell Lee I was going to do this, but um, Lee texted me a couple weeks ago and was like, hey, this for the next week, we're going to just pick some of our favorite songs and sing them, which that's kind of hard because there's a lot of really wonderful songs out there. And I threw out some ones and he kind of brought this one to my mind and I was like, yes, yes, I want to do this one. And I just want to give you some encouragement this morning because I know myself that I tend to compare myself a lot to what other people are able to do or other people's relationships, other people's places in life or their spiritual walks with God. And I just want to remind you yourself, remind myself this morning that you are chosen, that you are not forsaken, that you have a purpose. And it's to know God and to make him known. And it's so awesome to me that the highest king would want to welcome me. And I just want you to take that in this morning and worship him through this song. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me who the sun sets free oh it's free indeed and I'm a child of God yes I am free at last he has ransomed me his grace Thank you. 
Good morning, Solitude family. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm here. I appreciate Brother Joey uh, giving me this opportunity this morning to stand here in this sacred, in this holy place that we might proclaim the Word of God one more time. And uh, our prayers have been for Brother Joey and his family, all the all those that are sick, and some of those that are in the hospitals, those that's lost loved ones this week, and we just pray that uh, God would be near them today. Turn your Bibles, if you will, and I hope you've got your Bibles, uh, to John 16th chapter, verses 7 through 11. <clears throat> I want to speak to you this morning concerning... When the Spirit speaks. Now, I would hope that coming of the new year that, that uh, we would pray that God would continue to speak to us, continue to, to uh, reveal himself to us through the power of his Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and, um, and a few other things. But uh, let me read the scripture. Let me set the... Uh, place where Jesus is at at this time. He's, he's talking to his disciples and he's about to leave. He's telling them he's fixing to depart. And that in this particular time, he says that, uh, get ready, I'm going to depart. But he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to send the comforter to you. And... Uh, he will teach you all things. The comforter is uh, parakletos in the Greek. I learned that big word just a week or two ago. <laughs> and he is our paraclete between us and the Father. Boil down what that means is he is our go-between. He is our intercessor to us between us and God. He said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will convict the world of sin. He will convict <clears throat> of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. He would convince us of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because... The prince of this world is judged. Let us pray. Father, as we bow one more time in your presence today. Father, we'd ask that you might anoint your word today. Father, that I might be a vessel that you could speak through. That all things would be right. The Heavenly Father, Lord, we might communicate truth today. Father, I pray, Lord, that your truth would shine through. I pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that the Holy Spirit, that He would speak to our hearts today and draw us closer and closer to You. Father, lead, guide, and direct. And Father, in whatever the outcome, we still give You the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we ask it all in the lovely and the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior and Your Son. Amen. When the Spirit speaks, if I was to ask each of you, how long has it been since you heard the Spirit speak to you each and every day? How long has it been since you yielded and obeyed the Spirit of God? Those of us who have been saved by uh, by the grace of God, by His blood on Calvary. 
uh, that we've been repented of our sin and accepted him as Lord and Savior, then he lives in us. It's not thee or them, it's he lives in us. He goes with us everywhere we go. He is by us and with us and on us and in us. He's all around us. He should be the one that we listen to, not the other one. He said he was going to convince, he was going to convict us of sin. Now, it's not popular these days to talk about sin. We don't want to hear about sin. It's not politically correct to talk about sin today. The day and the culture that we live in today, they don't like to hear about sin. But sin is still sin. It don't matter whether it's uh, 2024, 2023, or 2025, or whenever it may be. Sin is still sin. The basic problem with mankind is sin. That's simple, isn't it? Sin. Well, what happens? When Adam and Eve, we all know the story, they, they committed the sin and they uh, kind of fell from the grace of God for a while and, and was cast out and sin was pronounced upon all mankind at that point in time. You may think you're pretty good folk. <laughs> you may think you're a pretty good person. You may, uh, you may think, well, I, you know, I go to church, you know, and I do this and I do that, and, and uh, I'm a pretty good old boy or girl or woman. But the basic problem is you're a sinner. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's biblical. So we're failures, aren't we? So the Bible teaches us that when the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, has come, and He has come, He will reprove us of sin. He will convict us of sin. How long has it been since we've been convicted of sin? I'm talking about where we got under conviction and we come to the Lord and He saved us. And how long has it been since, that, since we got saved that we got convicted of our actions and our sin? That's part of the Holy Spirit's job is He comes and He speaks to If He lives in us, if we proclaim that He, Jesus, the Lord and Savior, by the power of His Holy Spirit, comes in and lives in our heart, then we have access, don't we? How long has it been since He convicted you of something? I said, oh, Glenn, you messed up. That thought that you shouldn't have thought. That action or reaction that you had towards something that happened to you. And you kind of lost it for a minute. We talked about that a little bit in Sunday school. Sin is still sin. Don't care who you are. We are sinners. Have we not been sinners? Christ died for nothing. You know what the you know what the baddest of all sinners is? The 
crowning sin, if you'll have it, is human goodness. I've done good. I'm good. I'm not bad. I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. I'm good to my wife. I'm good to my family. I'm good to my neighbor. I don't cuss too much. I don't let a bad word slip too much. I'm good. The Bible says there's none good, no, not one. And Isaiah 64 tells us in 6, I believe it is, tells us that our righteousness is as of filthy rags before him. So that puts us all in the same category, doesn't it? How good are you? I suppose that... Uh, I suppose if we had a cup and I, everybody in the world lined up all the way around, I don't know how many times it would go around the world before we got to the end. But if we put our goodness and our righteousness in that cup and we passed it one and to another, to another, to another, to another, to another, and it got back to the front. I don't think there'd be enough righteousness in that cup to make us righteous with God. The next point I want to talk about is the He wants to convict us of righteousness, of His bountiful Bountiful, bountiful provision. He's made a way. He's made a way. When Jesus died on the cross, let's back up just a little bit. When Jesus was in the garden and he was praying and, and, and he was agonizing with God and his, his heart was, was being broken and, and there he, he, his breath, his sweat came as drops of blood. Agonizing with the Lord. Now this is Jesus. Who was he agonizing for? Not himself, but for us and for the sin of the world. And then when he went to that cross, this is Glenn speaking. I don't know that this is what happened, but, but on the cross, when he bowed his head, when Jesus bowed his head on the cross and said, it is finished, the plan is done. There's no other way. When the Lamb of God hung on the cross of Calvary for the sin of the whole world and shed His blood that you and I might go free, that we might be forgiven, when He, when he gave up the ghost and was buried and He arose the third day. Now I can't quantify this. This is just Glenn. If he had that cup, he had that blood in that cup that he shed and he presented to the Father, now it is done. That whosoever will, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord might be saved. That's righteousness. When the Holy Spirit convicts our heart that we are lost and undone without God, without hope in the world. And let me tell you something. I've had people tell me, well, I don't know what, is, what was the Holy Spirit speaking of. Yeah, you do. There ain't nobody in the world speaks like the Holy Spirit. 
There ain't nobody in the world speaks like him. It's just as if Jesus himself spoke to you audibly in your heart. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. For, I call it the Holy Spirit, but Jesus called him the Holy Ghost. For you Baptists, it's a little bit timid on that. <laughs> hey, a lot of Baptists, it gets kind of unnerved when you start talking about the Holy Ghost. That's who he is. Jesus called him the Holy Ghost. He called him the Comforter. He said, when the Spirit of truth shall come. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit of God comes and he dwells among us. When he speaks, you know it. There won't be any question to say, they use him and say, was that you? Was, was that you, Lord? No. <laughs> there's a lot of spirits speak. But there's only one Holy Spirit that speaks to your heart. And when he does, you'll know it. I was in church all my life. A lot of, back in the old days, we, we really had some jam up revivals and had some hard preachers come in, and now I'm talking about they preach the word. And people come down. Well, a bunch, bunch of young folks came down. And, well, gosh, I thought I was supposed to go down too. I go down. They take me over to the baptizing pond, and they baptize me. All is well, all is good. Until <laughs> one day preacher Roy Pledger was preaching the gospel in a revival meeting. And guess what happened? The real man spoke. The Holy Ghost spoke to my heart. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. He, Jesus, in the Spirit spoke to my heart. Uh, I didn't have to ask who it was. I knew who it was. Guess what? That day I got lost. I got lost that day. And I needed a Savior. I'm going to tell you something. We need some old time conviction of the Holy Spirit of God. Not only to the lost, but to us that are saved. We need the yearning in the Spirit of God moving in us. It ought to glow on us. Jesus living in and through us. Well, we ought to be glorying with the glory of Jesus. We ought to be walking like we've been with Jesus. You know what about the apostles? You know what they said? <laughs> I told old Peter, he said, uh, aren't you one of them disciples? Because he walked different. He talked different. Of course, you know, Peter denied it, but that's another story for another day. But people know. One of the scriptures says that we are his living epistles read every day. Someone is looking at our lives. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ living in us. Because nothing about us is righteous. Nothing. The only righteousness that we have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. His blood on Calvary's cross that we repented one day and asked him to come into our heart and our life and got saved. Amen. And he sealed us. And he keeps us. I just want to throw that in for good measure. When he saves you, he seals you, and you're his forevermore. 
Sometimes we don't live like it, do we? I tell you what I think in the church today, all across the nation, everywhere around the world, we need some old time Holy Spirit conviction. How many, how many times has he beckoned you to do something? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I mean, no, no way for me. That's the way it was about preaching. That's the way it was about preaching. No, no, sir. I ain't going to preach. What I did. Let me tell you something. When the Holy Spirit, when he gets a hold of you, when he gets a hold of you, you'll know it. He'll shake your tree. He'll shake your tree and see what kind of fruit falls off too. Hopefully it's good fruit. When Jesus hung on that cross, I'm going to finish here just in a minute. It was finished. Satan was ruined. He was condemned. He was sentenced. And he was judged then and there. It was done. Satan has no more rule or power over us who are saved. Only if we let him have it. We have power over him because Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit, lives in me. When that temptation comes, good way. Uh-uh. And I'm going to tell you, I told Sunday school class a while ago that every, I believe everyone in here that's been saved has a sin that so easily besets us. Something that gets to us worse than anything else. Something that tempts us more than anything else. I believe every one of us has got one that bothers us. A lot of times it's pride. Hmm. Our righteousness is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And I want to speak one more time, one more thing of judgment. He's going to convince us, he's going to convict us of judgment. He is already judged. Listen to what he said. Of judgment because the prince of this world, which is Satan, is judged. Not will be judged, but is judged. He's done. All he can do now is try to deter you and I and not make up lot for us not to walk in the righteousness of, of God and, and not to have a life that is productive in the work of God. That's all he can do to us. Draw us away. I don't want to work in Sunday school. I don't want to. I don't want to man the doors. I, 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 I don't want to clean the trash can out, take care of the church. I don't want to serve as deacons. I don't want to serve in all the places that he's calling me to serve and he's still beckoning. You know, the Holy Spirit don't give up. He just keeps on. He just keeps on. He just keeps on. And Satan just keeps on. He keeps on saying, no, just wait. Just wait. Do it, do it next time. This is not the right time. If you're lost, that's what he's saying to you right now. He said, this is not the day. No, no, not today. Uh, no, so-and-so's here, and I don't want to let them see me come down. I, no, not today. So that's how Satan works. He's very subtle. 
Very subtle. We talk about sin. You say, well, here we go with that self-righteous person again. Oh, I'm good enough. And I had a person say one time, I'm as good as the best and better than the rest. Mm. I'm as good as any of them body down there at that church. He said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not preaching to them. I'm preaching to you. That's what the Lord said. Well, there, there's a bunch of hypocrites down there at that church. I'm as good as they are. That's what Satan is saying. The Lord said, I'm not speaking to them. I'm speaking to you. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing here this morning. He's speaking to us. He's speaking to us. You see, Satan is judged already. And there's been a place prepared for him. And it's called hell. The lake of fire. See, I, I, I may be wrong, but I, I believe it this way. That on our last breath that we draw, we either going to go to the place called hell or we're going to go to be with the paradise of God, to be with him. There's coming a time the great white throne judgment. It's coming, y'all. And all those that were in hell are going to be judged. The final judgment. See, here in, in our world that we live in, you know, we have laws. We break a law, whether it be big or bad or whatever. We break a law and and we go to court. They put us, maybe put us in jail for a while. And uh, depending on what the severity of it is, you may get bond, you may not. Get out for a little while. And then you go before the judge, you're judged, and you go straight to the penitentiary. That's where you go. But see, in this... God's way is he convicts us of our sinful nature we know who we are we're sinners and and then we come to the knowledge of the righteousness of Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary and shed his blood for our sin we repented of our sin we accepted him as our Lord and Savior and our master of our lives and now we are saved and this judgment down here don't apply to me. Praise the Lord. But you say, preacher, I'm pretty good. I've done good. I give to the poor. I even tithe. I do all this stuff. You know, I do all this good stuff. Let me ask you something. You say, well, you know, every once in a while I might let a little bad word slip out or I might do this. Give this one illustration, and I'm going to close. You say, well, that's just a little sin. Here's some big sins over here. Big pile of garbage over here. But there's just a little, little small teacup here. But now, in this teacup is a deadly poison. Is a deadly poison. There's a lot of stuff piled up over here. Right? Big old bunch of stuff piled up over here. But which one is more deadly? What is the little thing that keeps you from coming to know the Lord? That is the deadly sin. 
is to go through life, hear sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon, Sunday school lesson after Sunday school lesson after Sunday school lesson, and yet never be convicted, never yield to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and come and ex repent of sin and accept Him and be saved? You've never done that? That is the greatest sin of all. That you neglected what Jesus done on the cross of Calvary. That is the deadly sin. You will go straight. People don't like to hear this anymore. But you will go straight to hell. At last breath you will wake up in the flames of fire just like the rich man did. And then on the final judgment. The great white throne judgment. Guess what will happen? You will be judged and cast into the lake of fire where there's no quenching. There's, there's no dying it down. There's no getting away from it. Preacher, you're trying to scare me. I hope I scare you straight into heaven. I really do. I'm as, as honest as I can be this morning. We need to know about sin. We need to know about righteousness. And we need to know about judgment. It's coming. Judgment is coming. I'm going to give you a little illustration Adrian Rogers gave. And, and boy, it stuck, it stuck with me. I had this little town, a small place, a community. Every preacher that come this, had this one guy. He's always giving the preachers a hard time, arguing with them, debating with them. And none of them could ever stand up to him. Well, they got a new little young preacher in there. And he was going down the street one day. Here this guy comes. He comes strutting up to him. He said, I don't believe that Bible. And the young little preacher said, in Hebrews, we all know it. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Well, I don't believe that Bible. I don't believe a word it says. Judgment's coming. Judgment's coming. Judgment's coming. Everything that he'd bring up, that he didn't believe in. He didn't believe in the church. He said, they're all hypocrites down there. I don't believe in the church. It's appointed unto men once to die, and then the judgment. Every time he'd come up and say something, the little young preacher would say, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Well, the guy got frustrated because he couldn't baffle him. He couldn't argue with him. He wouldn't argue with him. He'd just quote that scripture to him. So he went toward his, well, on his way home, went over this little bridge, this little creek, whatever. And, they, and Adrian Rogers said that the guy made the testimony later. It said that even the frogs were saying, judgment, 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 judgment. Long story short, the man eventually got saved and he gave that testimony that after he talked to that little young preacher and said even the frogs sounded like they were saying judgment. It spoke to his heart. I want to know this morning, has the Lord spoke to your heart? What is he bidding you to do? I don't care if you're a member here or not a member here. I don't care who you are. If you're lost, I pray that you'd come get saved before it's everlasting too late. I pray that you'd come and yield to the Holy Spirit as He speaks to you and He, he pleads with you. There's a lot more He, the Holy Spirit, does. But in this passage, it was about sin. It was about righteousness. It was about judgment. I don't care who you are. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you this 
morning. Saved or not. If not, come and get saved today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, as we bow again in your presence, I ask, Father, for the power of he, the Holy Spirit, that he would speak to hearts this morning. That, Father, conviction would come upon all of our hearts. That, Father, if we're saved, that, Father, that, that we would serve you like we ought to serve you. We ought to do the things that uh, may seem unimportant. Lord, in the grand of things, Lord, but Father, it is most important to you. I pray, Father, that we would be yielded to him, that, Father, we would do as his bidding. And, Father, I pray especially for that one that is lost. There are none that the sound of my voice. The Heavenly Father, Lord, you'd speak to them through the power of your Holy Spirit, that he would speak conviction. And they'd come and get saved today before it's everlasting too late. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, your Son and my Savior. Amen. It is an incredible, awesome thing to be able to end our service in this year from the baptistry as we uh, get to witness Talon and Ledger Cryer um, follow Jesus in believer's baptism. So come on down, Talon. <clears throat> I met with these with these family with uh, with Talon and Ledger and their and her parents, their parents uh, Adam and Raven, a few weeks ago, and we discussed what this means. And no doubt, these kids are saved. They love Jesus, and we love them being part of our church. And hey, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. This is awesome. So she said, "You're welcome." But this is awesome. So so Talon, based on your faith and your belief in Jesus, I baptize you, my sister. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Huh. Yeah, it's okay. All right, big man Ledger. Same, same conversation with him a few weeks ago. He knows what it means to be saved, and he trusted Jesus as his Savior. Ledger, buddy, I'm proud of you. So proud of you, man. This is such an awesome thing that you especially get to do this with your sister today. So this is an awesome opportunity to be able to tell the world what Jesus did on the inside. And because of the faith that you placed in Jesus, I baptize you, Ledger, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take that, devil. That's awesome. If you would please stand to your feet, we're going to be cl uh, close out in prayer. God bless you. Happy New Year. Happy great beginning of a new year next week, today, tomorrow, whatever you call that. God bless you. And just pray for your church. Pray for our church. Pray for our pastor. Pray for uh, the Holy Spirit to speak to us in 2024. Amen. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for this day, for this awesome opportunity. God, to get to experience the baptism of Talon and Ledger, Lord, I pray today that you would place in them the ability to hear you when you speak to them. I know they already have that, God, but make it ever more strongly today. And I do thank you for Glenn and his message, God. May we all hear you speak to us more clearly in 2024. May we take our fingers out of our own ears and hear what you have to say to us. God, we thank you for this church, for this incredible blessings that you have poured out on solitude. And I pray that we would be the kind of church that you want us to be, God. Pray that you would allow us to be your hands and feet in our area. Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for this incredible day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>